Hi folks and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I haven't posted anything for probably over two weeks now. Uh, one, we've had a son visiting from overseas and also um, we've been trying to, uh, this, this room is full of junk. <laughs> and while he's been here, we've been focusing on trying to get rid of stuff so we can make this into a proper workable studio in inverted commas, uh, but uh, it's a slow process. A lot of things here. So anyway, I just put up, a, I'm in the process of putting up a, a video that I started to do a couple of weeks ago on my uh, Big Mac G3 desktop computer. And I've put that up on here, but you'll find it's very, it's very poor because I got into trouble thinking I'd be okay to use it. But when I actually um, uh, started trying to navigate my way around it, I'd forgotten a lot of stuff. And uh, also I didn't really set it up properly. So I've left that there anyway. It's an unfinished symphony on the desktop G3 from the old days, those big ones, which I did hint that I was a little while back, I was going to do a review of that. So today I'm just going to um, share a couple of things with you. Um, people are into point and shoot film cameras these days. And one of the, um, the best point and shoot cameras that ever came on the market for a while ago back there, just before the digital cameras and everything came in, was the APS system, which was these little cameras here. That's a little Canon one. That's a, uh, a Canon ELF LT. I'll just hold that up there for you. And uh, these take these little um, cartridges like this, the little uh, APS cartridges, and I'll explain a bit more about them. They're a little bit um, smaller, and you used to get about 24 shots. That's a Kodak one alongside of it. I'll just put it there alongside, so I think you can see it's a fraction smaller than the, than the Kodak one. Get about 24 shots. Uh, I'm not sure that you could get slide film. You certainly had color film and probably black and white film, but anyway, um, they were, and this is another little one which I bought uh, a while ago, which I have got it going. I haven't got a film in it at the moment. You can't, you can only buy a um, uh, uh, film that's expired on the internet these days. You can't buy a new film for these little cameras, but this is a beautiful little one too. And they had um, three settings an ordinary setting, um, and a panoramic setting, and another setting. So you just had a little lever on the back there. I don't know where you can see that little lever there which, uh, where are we? Just there next to my finger. So you can move that little lever. I'm not moving it very well, am I? In there, and you look through the viewfinder anyway, trust me, you can. So these were great little point and shoot cameras. My wife had, had, had this one and her, that way I think it goes. And uh, her sister had the same camera. And they used it all the time. And uh, you can still get these processed in the film lab that I use. They'll still process um, the expired film if you get some and shoot it. So I'm planning to do that, particularly this this actually little Canon's busted. But this um, uh, Olympus is in fine working order. So I'm hoping to get some film to put in that. But we'd click and shoot, point and shoot, little optical viewfinder, built in flash, a few different settings. And uh, when you got your photos back, depending on whether you had taken just ordinary shots. If you took just ordinary shots and hardly any panoramas, they came back in a packet that size, but if you, uh, that size, but if you uh, did some panorama shots, they'd mix them up, you'd come back with a, a film about, uh, a packet about that size, because that's got some big wider shots in it. Now the quality of these things wasn't brilliant, but it was passable. And, uh, you know, we loved it. I'll just show you the size of the panorama prints. So what do we got here? There's a, a vertical panorama print of our one of our cats sitting on the piano, which is quite interesting. And, um, and you've got this size, which is a different size again. That's like on the ferry going to Kangaroo Island. Um, and what else have we got here? Not too many other panorama shots in this one here. Um, it's a sort of a semi panorama shot, that one there. That was down at Cape Jervis, waiting to go on the ferry across to Kangaroo Island. The quality is good on these cameras, but not as good as 35 millimeter. There's a shot taken of me 
with a cat sitting on my head, I think. Yeah, one of our cats. We used to have up to seven cats at one stage, but uh, we've only got one now. So that's the little um, uh, point and shoot ATS system. They said it wasn't a successful system, but the only reason that it was successful in our family, and the only reason it became unsuccessful, I think, was because the digital um, uh, camera revolution came in and just took over with um, uh, electronic capture and not not film capture. So there you go. They they were interesting in that um, on here they had a, on on this on the side there. You can see that. See those little symbols there. They tell you whether it's expired or what does it say? Um, unexposed, partially exposed, fully exposed, and processed. So there you go. Unexposed, partially exposed, fully exposed, and processed. So by looking at this camera here, this uh, film here, you can see the little white symbol there. That means it's fully exposed and it's been processed. That's been processed. So there's a, actually in here, there's a negative. Now, I was looking on the internet the other day because I was thinking I've got some of these prints. I've got quite a few packets of these photos and I could scan them um, or take them into the, they could still print these in the film lab that I go to and they could possibly scan them and give you a digital copy. But I also found a YouTube a video a guy showing how you can actually take the film negatives out of these and put them on your Epson uh, V700, which I've got here, scanner, and scan them. I have done that once before, actually, some time ago when I found his um, YouTube video about that. So so that's just a little bit of a glimpse, a little bit of a shout out for the APS system. If you if you love playing around with old cameras and you want to, it's not cheap to buy the expired film on the internet, but there are a few around and, and have a go with these little cameras. So beautiful little pocketable cameras. And uh, if you if films your thing and point and shoots your thing, that's the way to go. Well, some of the way to go. Another way to go with point and shoot, and I'm going to do a review of this one later on, is um, a friend of mine goes to garage sales every Saturday morning, and he rang me up last Saturday morning and said, "Jeff, there's a camera here. Uh, are you interested?" And I said, "What is it?" He said, "It's a Pentax." And I said, "What model?" So he told me it was a Pentax MZ50. I said, "How much?" He said, "Oh, about twenty bucks." And I said, well, it's probably a good camera. You should get it. So anyway, to cut a long story short, he did get it and he's going to sell it with my help. This is the actual camera. It's a Pentax MZ50. I've done a review on this channel before of the MZ6, Pentax MZ6. This is very similar. This is the MZ6 was a later model than this one, but it's a nice little point and shoot camera. Sorry, that's the Canon. It's very, very similar to this Canon camera, 5N, which I've done a review on. Sorry, I got picked up the wrong one. But this here is the um, the Pentax MZ MZ50, and it looks very similar to that Canon camera. It's got a couple of Sigma zoom lenses came with it, which they used to sell as part of the package deal in those days when they were selling these. But it's a really nice little uh, camera. It's all plastic, but it works really well. It feels really well. This one, I put a film in it yesterday, and it takes two CR2 lithium batteries, and I'm uh, once I'm going to do a bit of a photo walk later on and a proper shoot with this, and I'll show you some samples of what I get with this one later on. Once I've done all that and I've done a YouTube review of it, then we're going to advertise it locally and see if we can sell it. So there you go. That's just a little glimpse of something else to come along the way. So you can have a look at my video about um, the the Mac G3, the big desk. You can see it sitting there in the background behind me. If I just Point over where are we over there that's it there um and um have a look at that and just to whet your appetite because it's a terrible video i must confess <laughs> so most of them are probably so anyway um thanks for watching just a, a just a shout out for the aps system if you want to have a try at an old system uh that was really good in my opinion even though people said it was a failure it wasn't in my opinion and the opinion of some of us in the family who had these little cameras so and look forward to when I do a review and, and show you some photos of the Pentax MZ50 um, and uh, we're hoping to sell that later on and make a profit. Although when I get something like that in my hands, I'm thinking, oh, do I want to really sell this? <laughs> anyway, like if you like, subscribe if you wish. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.